Cotton's clubbing of Mr. Cox set EastEnders on its murderous way. And back on the square, the craziness continues with Max's bout of bonnet surfing. We're halfway through the evening. Um, we've done the first part, which is me obviously getting hit by the car and breaking the windscreen. Now we're just setting up for me to actually come off the car, so I'll set myself up in a position. Lee, just come up to the bonnet, get really close. Yeah, that's better. Lock it off there, yeah. Claire, please. Paul will drive down and make the corner and give the wheel a bit of a blip, and it'll pitch me off and roll off the car. So as you turn. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, probably. Three, two, one, action. So let's come round on Jake with lighting effect now. Steve seems so happy with the windscreen breaking first time and obviously the dismount from the car now that, uh, yeah, we've done it in half the time. Well, Lee's a great stunt man. I've worked with him a lot, particularly on this series. We did the smashing up of the Vic last year and, you know, various other things. He's just very sympathetic to what I'm trying to do. And we speak the same language, so we know we can, you know, we can communicate very quickly. He knows exactly what I'm after visually, and it, it gets done very, without, with no fuss, which is really what I like. You're all right, look good. Oh, so, uh, exactly, I'm all right. Yeah. Next bit we've got to do is just put some small knee pads on Jake and get him rolling into shot the aftermath of the accident, and the drama continues. How far do I need to drop into this thing? Uh, really, you just need that last flop over onto your front. I'm going to try and get the focus so it's on your hand. Yeah. So a little twitch. OK. Uh, speed, three, two, one, action. So, someone has mullered Max with a Mondeo, but who done it? In this square, there's no shortage of candidates, most of whom answer to her name, Branning. All the suspects in this story have been in this story for two or three years, and are those close members of the family that have once loved Max and now hate him. Well, who hasn't Max annoyed over the last few months? And arguably, the person who's been caused the deepest distress is long-suffering wife, Tanya. Well, since December the 25th, 2007, Tiny has been on a bit of a journey. Merry Christmas! Christmas Day, of course, was when she found out about Stacy and Max's terrible affair. The stupid, crazy thing is, I still love you. I'm married now. What, when you think all this, you think this is just going to go away? All Tanya's worst fears about Max have been proved to be true. We just watched you snogging her face off. The hall in front of all your family and friends being exposed to the fact that your husband is sleeping with his son's wife is, is a, a, a little bit too much to take, even for forgiving Tanya. I mean, you picked up right where you left off, didn't you, eh? I probably got bases in case to Bradley. It never stopped. I know you. It never stopped. It did. <laughs> Tanya was hurt by him. He absolutely destroyed her. He humiliated her publicly. He lied and lied and lied and behaved like a dog behind her back. <laughs> I think she's just rebounded all over the place and rebound number one was straight into the arms of Sean who was very conveniently there and she just needed some brave strong arms really to flop into while well, she sort of got herself back together and she flopped into his and didn't get herself together really. Eventually Sean and Tanya got to a point where she just couldn't see any other way out or any way that she could ever be in this world without um, getting rid of him so Sean said he'd help. I didn't think she was ever capable of murder, but she did bury him alive, didn't she? So I think if you push someone to limits, all the characters are capable of anything on the square. Tanya has tried to forgive. She's tried to get over it. You know, she's tried to bury it. Fill it in. Tanya, he's still alive. I know. Well, how long till he wakes up? What do you think he's going to do? Dig himself out? Just fill it in! I really do hate him, don't you? But, you know, she is lovely. It was a bit of a blip. I mean, she did dig him up, so, I mean, there, you know, there's hope. <laughs> Tiny's got form, hasn't she? She tried to bury him alive at Easter. OK, we learnt then that she wasn't a killer. But, you know, she dug a hole, didn't she? She drugged him, she pushed him in it. Maybe she should have finished the job. <laughs> I think Tanya could quite easily get to the point where 
she would want to get rid of Max. He's very persistent. He got her drunk, he laced her drinks, he tried to make out she was an irresponsible parent. <laughs> he's used the law, he's manipulated the kids. He's really trying to mess with her head. So she's found it yeah, very claustrophobic. I think the very last straw, actually, has been where Max gets back into Tanya's head one more time and he gets a kiss of her. At that point, her anger, her fury at what's happened and at her own weakness comes back out. The fact that after all this, He's still able to elicit those feelings in her, I think, has the potential to push her over the edge. No, you just, you just worked out another little angle, did you? just made another little way to wrap around your uh, feet. No, no, I didn't have a plan to say that, did I? She just can't see any other way of living her life while Max is around. <laughs> Chad, Chad, please, please, just don't go like this. With EastEnders Halloweens, there's often more tricks than treats. Oh, Halloween's always a good time to be in Albert Square. There's always some fabulous zombie costumes wandering around. That local fancy dress shop is fantastic, by the way, isn't it? Trick or treat? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, if you don't mind. But the first prize goes to someone with a touch of the devil about them. A wicked, wicked. Trick or treat! Trick or treat! treat. Witch to the day! Darkness falls across the land. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Close at hand. Cheers. Creatures fall in search of blood to terrorize. Eastern as always does Halloween's quite well. You get a nice sense of spookiness, and sometimes they're funny, um, and sometimes they're serious. You just wait. Oh! 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 <laughs> you know, they're never more serious than when Trevor and Little Mo kind of had their final confrontation. Do you remember? Do you remember what I said I would date you if you ever went with somebody else? Do you? I think Little Mo was dressed as Little Red Riding Hood and um, and Trevor may as well have been wearing a big bad wolf costume. You said you'd kill me. Did you think I was joking? And then the huge showdown, the, the two-hander between the two of them, which ended up with Little Mo just really going, go on then, what are you going to do? You're a sad, pathetic little man. I don't know why I was that afraid of you. <laughs> and the match falling to the ground where Trevor had threatened to burn them all. <laughs> and then this huge woof of flame. I do remember evil Trevor going in the house fire on Halloween, but of course, lovely Tom died with him. He got the kid out, and he got little Mo out. But sadly, Trevor and Tom perished in that Halloween fire. We love to fight another day! <laughs> Of course, murders aren't the only sort of mysteries, and in the famous case of Michelle Fowler, EastEnders move from who done it to who's the daddy. Well, go on then, tell me who the father was. Who's the father? Who was he? Well, surely you can tell me. We've well, not only got the who done it, so we've got the who's been doing it. <laughs> uh, the biggest of them all, of course, has got to be um, Michelle Fowler, pregnant schoolgirl. Michelle was 16, which, you know, at the time, was fantastically shocking. It really, really was. I just think it was one of those groundbreaking storylines. I wanted you to be one of the first to know I'm pregnant. Oh my God. If you'll excuse the expression.